despitefully use us and abuse us, to love them, Lord, to love our enemies, Lord. This is what mercy does. Let me not neglect mercy. And, Lord, at the bottom of all this, Lord, is in the same way that I judge, I will be judged again. Lord God, help me, Lord Jesus, to be quick to be merciful, quick to show grace, quick to show kindness. God, I don't want to neglect mercy in my life, Lord. Strengthen me, Oka, we pray right now. God, give me a greater sense of kindness. Lord, fill me with greater mercy and greater compassion for others than ever before. Oh, God, I want to know. I don't want these things to be omitted from my life. Lord, I'll get some things out, but I also need to put some things in. Lord God, I want to be on fire for you, and I want to be indifferent. I don't want to be cold, and I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be a passionate for you. I want to be full of mercy, moved easily by compassion and by people's needs. God, I do not want to despise the law. I don't want to mock anything, Lord, that others may follow, Lord. There's some that maybe, Lord, think a certain things are necessary in their walk with God. Let me not mock them for what, Lord God, there's been a conviction in their life. Lord Jesus, help me not to despise the law. Oh, God, when I hear the laws of this country, when I hear about the laws, Lord, of the Word of God, when I hear what you require of me, let me not despise it. Let me not mock it, Lord, and let me not go along with other people that are doing it. God, let me be not silent when other people mock, Lord, the laws of the land and the laws, Lord Jesus, of our world. Lord, I've been guilty of this, Father, this past year. Lord, have mercy upon me, I pray. Lord, God, let me be quick to, Lord, to strengthen, Lord Jesus, the law and to be obedient to the law, Lord, so that I might live above the law by the power of the Holy Spirit. Live better, Lord Jesus, in the necessary things and the base things. But, Lord God, to live at a higher level. And then finally, Lord, if I've been unstable, and Lord, I know there have been times I've been unstable. I've had my bad days, Lord. I've had my tired days. I've had my days. Lord God, when I did not give it my very best, I'm praying today, Lord, that you would help me to be more stable, more consistent, more faithful, more true. Lord God, so that I will know. Lord Jesus, I do not want to be like a wave of the sea, as it says in James chapter 6, verse in, in chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, Lord, I don't want to be driven and tossed by the wind of this world. I don't want to be driven and tossed by the opinions of others. I don't want to go along with the crowd, Lord. I don't want to go along with the, Lord, the opinions of our world and the ideas of our world. Lord God, I want to walk according to your word. I want to walk according to what the Spirit says. Lord, I don't want to follow after man. I don't want to follow after the dictates and desires of my heart. Oh, God, I don't... I want to receive from the Lord. Your word is very clear. Anyone that's unstable, Lord, will never receive from the word. He will not receive anything from the Lord, God, because we are unstable. Lord God, we want to be faithful and stable and mature and true today. We pray these things in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to conclude with that, but let me just tell you, there's some things that we need to revive and restore. There's some things that we need to renew. We may talk about some of these tonight, but um, contrition, faith, wholeheartedness, righteousness, and obedience. These make powerful, powerful things in our life that if we strengthen them, will make our prayers and our walk with God powerful. So if we're contrite, if we have a willingness to be humble, and if we have full of faith and have a whole heart and we are righteous and doing the right things and then we obey the word of God, God will bless us. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord in conclusion? Thank you, Lord, for these promises. Thank you, Lord. Our desire is to be, Lord Jesus, to have a, a broken heart, a broken and a contrite heart so that you do not despise us, so that you're quick to forgive us. Lord, we want to be full of faith. Thank you, Lord, for the faith that you've given us. Let it be increased. Lord, I pray for your Lord, we want to love you with our whole heart. Lord, and with a mindset that says, I want to do what's right. And, Lord, above all, we want to be obedient. Because, Lord Jesus, we know that stubbornness and, and, Lord, resistance is as the sin of witchcraft. We don't want to go that way. We thank you, Jesus, for these things. Amen. God bless you. You have a minute or two before service starts. Let's love on one another.
check, check. Test, check. atmosphere in this place. Would you join me? Let's stand together. Let's lift our hands as we will. Let's worship the Lord with all that's within us, with our whole heart. Hallelujah. We've come to praise you. God, we've come to fill our mouth with good things. God, we've come to fill our mouth with joy and with peace and power. We want to speak words of encouragement and strength. Lord, we want to tell you how awesome you are, how magnificent you are. Lord, we want to give you not only praise, but high praises. Lord, we want to give you the praise that's more, Lord Jesus, in words. We want to speak from the depths of our soul, Lord God, praise and worship and adoration, something that means something. God, we want to speak from the depths of our being, Lord, to praise you and to magnify you. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Amen. for me. 
here. I'm going to keep on doing it. Amen. Keep on singing. Keep on praising God. Hallelujah. He is God of the mountain, and he's God of the valley. It never ends. Hallelujah. We just welcome him into our hearts this morning to do the work that he wants to do in us. Hallelujah. We sing well because to this place Welcome to this broken vessel You desire to abide in the praises of your people So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer
moment to just close your eyes and lift your hands and just worship the Lord. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice right now in sweet surrender. Hallelujah. What a powerful name. What a mighty name. What a glorious name. There's no other name. There's none other name. Purosur, under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. We can be saved from sickness and disease and heartache and sorrow and pain. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today? That in the name of Jesus, you can be set free. Stop believing the lies of this world, the lies of the enemy. It says you're bound and you're 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 hindered by your past. Let me just tell you, God can set you free today. Spirit, soul, or body does not matter. In the name of Jesus. Come on, right now, let's go against every sickness, every disease of the mind or soul or spirit. Heavenly Father, we come against sin. We come against sickness. We come against all these things, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we bind. Lord, infirmity. We bind iniquity. We bind heartache and sorrow. And Lord, we bind shame and sickness in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus. We bind it. Come on, think about your family. Think about your neighbors right now. We bind, Lord, what's coming against our culture. Lord, depression, we bind you in Jesus' name. Come on, declare some things. Come on, take some boldness here today. Take some authority here today. Lord, I bind. I know what's going on in my family, member. Lord, I bind infirmity in the name of Jesus. I bind, Lord Jesus, in influences of this world. I bind influence of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I bind the blindness that the enemy has blinded them with in the name of Jesus. And I loose. Let's do some loosing here today. I loose a brand new awareness of you. I loose, Lord, healing. I loose deliverance, Lord. I loose joy. I loose vision. I loose fresh faith, oh God. I loose, Lord God, the glory of God in their lives. Come on, do you believe that we can do that? Come on, right now, in the name of Jesus. Say it with me, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the cross. By the power of the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Wow. God bless you. Amen. We're going to, of course, you may be seated. I'm going to ask Frank to share um, whatever he has from one of our missionaries, I believe, the Hallets. Amen. And then lead us in prayer for our missionaries. Well, praise the Lord. That's another new year. I'm going to uh, talk about two new missionaries. They're new to all of you that have not seen this piece of paper I have. So, uh, therefore, this young girl we sponsored, her name was Sabrina, <laughs> about two years ago, according to my record. Yeah, I got the picture up there. Good for you. Good for you. Very good work there. Very good work there. I just texted him yesterday. He got some grass. Anyway, Sabrina was is there on AIM, and then this young Dylan Hallett was there on AIM. And guess what? The Lord brought the two of them together. She is just vibrating because of the different things that God has done there. So we're, uh, we obviously... Our money's uh, uh, supporting both of them. But anyway, this is what happened with them in their duration this year in 2021. They got together. They got married. Um, I, I imagine Mike, I uh, know him quite well. He's uh, down in, uh, what's that church that Brother, yeah, Tama, yeah, Tama. And... Uh, They'd be excited, too. They were quizzers. That's how we knew them, too. This is a little bit, a little old. I got it in the summertime, but uh, we decided right now to take them on because they're, they're looking for help. He sank in the Atlantic District. They were here in the Atlantic District, did not get into our church, but Brother Howitt was just amazed at how the people stood behind them. People in Newfoundland, 
even got over there and everybody in New Brunswick. So he was just amazed and thankful for that. And they're back on the field in Scotland, as I mentioned. A little short time, he had to wait to get permission, uh, get a, um, uh, a permit with the UK um, to be uh, officially there in Scotland. So they're training for the Bible school teaching. Um, Sister Hallett will be in charge of, um, well, I'll just read you. She turns a return to the field and, and traveling. However, we praise the Lord, received his paperwork and arrived at the end of May. Jesus has worked out so many miracles to these people just in the few years that they've been there. They got into a place called Dunfermline. Dunfermline is a city in Scotland. I don't know exactly where it is. I could never put my nose on it. But Dunfermline has a beautiful hotel there. They've allowed them to rent the hotel and having the services there. And they moved over to other areas. They're in Edinburgh. This was the last missionary that I knew of was in Edinburgh. Um, my wife has the, uh, the map of all the missionaries and that she prays and we were discussing that the other day and not sure whether we still have a missionary in Scotland, but we do not sponsor one. We sponsor these people. So they had services in Edinburgh and another place called Falkirk. We are embarking on a new adventure in our passion, Bible school. Sabrina has been asked to serve as the academic dean of the full-time Harvest Bible College and is currently in training it's currently a time for multiple accreditations, inspections, so she has to be at the meetings trying to get upgraded in speed. And Dylan will be stepping up to help out with HBC's uh, part-time program. So they're both going full strong, full speed ahead. I don't know what he got, but if he put two bill monies together, maybe it'll be enough to carry it on. You just have a look at her. She don't want to get, she look at, she's got a hold of that Dylan boy, I'll tell you. She's got a hold of that arm and she's just happy. She's just happy. Reminds me of another young lady over here. <laughs> anyway, just about the same age too, I think. Just beautiful to see these people starting out. So we're going to pray. Um, one thing I'd like to mention just before I was going to mention at the beginning and I, I slipped my mind. The Marinos, Marinos in Greece, remember, they are on deputation back in, in the U.S. I don't know if they'll make it here. Uh, probably like to stay in the warmer part. But, and they may come this way. I hope so because we sponsor them. Um, since they left here, they've added... Um, they had one child and they were here, and they added two more. Did, did they have the two? Okay, the sec yeah, the second one was a small boy. Now a little guy. Judah is with them. Anyway, they're um, on deputation. But I'll speak to the pastor about this. Their biggest request that they have is that uh, when Brother and Sister Strickland work there, they have a beautiful, beautiful building right in Greece. And so uh, they're asking for help. They're, they want to uh, purchase this building and to keep it on. So we'll bring it to your attention later. Anyway, but uh, that's one other thing. Keep it in your prayer place for the Marinos on deputation. Lord, we come to you right now. We come to you now, Lord, these people in the foreign fields. It's a little different, Lord. It's a little different, Lord. They can't just reach over and touch a, a, a friend. They got new friends, but maybe a relative back here. Definitely family and friends. There's mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles that are back here. And Lord, the churches that they went to, 
They're back here. So their thoughts are back here, but yet they're striving for, striving for to reach souls in Scotland. I pray for that HBC Bible College, Lord. Lord, that you would just give them the unction that they require. Lord, the ability to be able to just lead properly in that area. And one thing that we ask, Lord, keep your hand upon the Marinos. Lord, just as they deputize right now, looking for deputation raises in their, dep in their finances. Lord, bless the Marinos, Lord Jesus. We come to the beginning of a new year, Lord. <laughs> bless them, Lord. Bless them. Until then, we want to be under submission to those in authority, and so that's why we've done song service a little bit different. We're only allowed one soloist. 
So hum as loud as you want, say the words, but uh, amen. Join us in doing that. There's something about saying the words that's kind of good too, though. I was enjoying that this morning, and, and uh, what a joy it is. I'm going to be glad to be in the house of the Lord, though. It's still good to be here, isn't it? God's people. You feel the presence of the Lord? Would you just like to thank Him for being here? I know we take it for granted sometimes, but thank you, Lord. Thank you for honoring us. Oh, the people of like precious faith gather together. Lord, each one a living coal, a flame of fire. What a beautiful bonfire. What a beautiful glory of God is in this place today. Thank you, Lord, for abiding in our worship and our praise today. Amen. Well, I don't know how long this series will go on, but I know it will go on for at least part of, of January. We'll talk about faith fundamentals. Say with me, faith fundamentals. Fundamentals. And we're not going to be too mental about it. We're going to hopefully do the other part of it, the more fun part. Amen of it. But uh, th today we're going to focus on the fundamental of faith. We'll talk a little bit about faith, and we'll talk about the power of prayer in building our faith. Amen. And so if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Jude. And there's no chapter because it's just one chapter. So it's Jude, verses 20 and 21. Man, Jude is a man of few words. And you're like, Pastor, I wish you would take after Jude. Amen. Jude 20 through 21. But you, beloved. See, that's me. That's me. Amen. You're the beloved. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. We build on our faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Would you pray that God would speak to you today? And I'm asking you to really mean it. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to speak to me. Jeff Tracy, Lord, not as a pastor, not as a leader of these precious people, not only as a shepherd, but as a human being, as a child of God, as a chosen people. Lord, as a chosen man of God, Lord, I pray, Lord, speak to me today through your word. And let my faith be built. Lord, help me to build up my faith today. Open my eyes to see on this first Sunday morning. Lord, as we go back to the basics, strengthen, Lord, the fundamentals of my life, the foundational truths upon which my calling and election are built. I pray, Lord, we would make sure in this hour where everything is shifting, Lord, that I have a firm foundation on the rock, Christ Jesus. I want to make sure. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. Wave at someone and say hi. Bless them in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen. <laughs> oh, there's so much I want to say, and I don't think I'll have time to say it today. There's something burning in the heart of your pastor. I am just uh, overwhelmed with um, a desire to see every one of us powerful, mighty, glorious people. And you say, me? Don't you know all the problems I've got? You think that matters to how powerful God can be in your life? Do you think our weaknesses matter? Do they limit God? Well, to some extent, probably. But let's be honest. That does not really limit God. It's our willingness to let him move through us that makes the difference, isn't it? It's our belief that he can that limits him. How much do you believe in what God can do? What kind of church do you want to be part of? That's the question for us today. Because the reality is what we see, what we have faith for, determines what God can do. God is not limited by his ability. He's not limited by his strength. He is limited by our understanding and by our willingness to follow after him. So my question for you today is, and I've been struggling with this and wrestling with this for several months now, if we are people that are full of the Holy Spirit, what's possible? anything. If it's only dependent upon the Holy Spirit, then that, that means that whatever's in me that gets in the way, that's what needs to get out of the way. You see, as we talk about the fundamentals or the foundational truths 
of our lives, the, the things that our faith is built upon over this next month. It's really, really important that we understand that if these things are real to us or true to us, and that's what faith is, right, is that we can see with spiritual eyes. Faith is sight, isn't it? It's spiritual ability and sight. So my question for you is, how real is God to us? Is he more real than the pain in your body? Is he more real than the pain in your heart? Is he more real than the cloud and the doubt and the fear? How real is God to us? Are we absolutely certain of the power and reality of God that he really can do anything, that he can do all things? Do you ever read the Bible and wonder if God could do that in your life? You ever wonder if you could be the person walking down the street and your shadow would heal somebody? Do you think that was just limited to Peter? Is the same spirit that was in Peter in Conrad's story this morning? That's the question. You see, the reality is what happens is when I start asking questions like that, right? Right, Joanne? Right, Irvin? Is that we start getting unsure because we're not sure about ourselves. But the problem is, is if we focus on ourselves, then these things cannot happen. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in the church. Our faith is not in the pastor, necessarily. It's not in our brothers or sisters. It, our faith is supposed to be in God. And if we would see him as he truly is and grow and increase our faith, all things are possible. You already agreed with that this morning. You already said that. Faith is a product of what we believe and what is truly real to us. Amen. When we are loved. Um, so Friday night after service, uh, we had our, our of course, uh, communion service and, and a wonderful time. And thank you so much for all those that helped. What a beautiful presence of the Lord. What a great, I, I just left on cloud nine. I mean, I was feeling great and I was feeling so good. And then I knew we got, we had, um, we got our fasting coming up starting at sundown tonight, which I've been informed is uh, 555, is that right? 555 is, is the deadline. So if you want to eat meat right up until that moment, then go for it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> if you want to eat your last sweet and be removing the crumbs at, at 555, that's fine. Um, I'm not sure what that says, but we won't go there. <laughs> but um, the point being is that uh, we knew that was coming. And so on Friday night, we decided, well, it's only a little after 9. We're going to run into town and get some Mickey D's. We're going to get some McDonald's. And so we ran in town, which, by the way, was not the greatest idea. They were not on their game uh, Friday night. So, oh, well, um, the fries were cold. That's just the only reason I went in. Um, but uh, so we decided to splurge uh, by going in town. And, and, um, but we had a real I was having a real tough time seeing on the way into town. It was just really kind of cloudy. And there was I didn't see any marks on my windshield. So I thought, well, I don't know. So, uh, you know, a few miles down the road or kilometers down the road, I said, well, maybe, maybe there's something on the windshield. So I, I did the windshield washing fluid, and it got clear. And all of a sudden, I could see that there were some streaks. Before that, I guess it was so uniform, it just, I couldn't even tell. Um, and so, and so I, you know, I began, I could, I could see a little more clearly, but it was still so dim. And so after we'd gone through the drive through I pulled over, and, and I have some wipes in my car for a glass cleaner. I don't like to clean lenses this way, but I needed to, I felt. And so I went out, and it, it took me, I don't know how many wipes it must have taken me. It took me at least three times. The first time I wiped it, it was still grungy and nasty. The second time I washed it, it still had, it still, uh, had some smears on it. And then the third time, it still had some films on it. And so I finally got it all cleaned off, and they were nice and crystal clear. And guess what? I could see on the way home. Isn't that amazing? You know, sometimes we don't recognize that our faith can get dull. We can go to church so many times that we hear the preached word, but we're not really hearing it. We're dull of hearing. We, we have so many ideas. We read the word of God, but if we're not careful when we read our daily Bible reading, we don't really get it. We, can, we do not get anything out of it. It may not increase our faith. It's just like, oh, I've read that before. Because why? It's not that there's not light. Was there light in my headlights? You better believe there was light there. Was the light any brighter? No. It was the filter that it was going through. It was the lens that I was, the lens had needed to be cleaned. The windshield that I was looking through needed to be cleaned. 
You, you see, sometimes these things happen, and I couldn't tell by looking at it because it was dark outside. And even when I was driving, I couldn't really tell. I could tell by the fact that I didn't have clarity. I could tell by the fact things weren't bright. I don't know what your spiritual life is like right now. I don't know if you feel the brightness and the glory of God. I don't know if you feel clear and certain in your walk with God, but I'm here to tell you God wants you to be. God wants you to have such clear vision and faith, and not only clear faith, but also illuminated by the Word of God, that the Word of God in your life would bring light to your path so that we can see clearly. Over the next several weeks, we're going to talk about several things that are fundamental of faith. What builds our faith? Today we're going to talk primarily about prayer because our communication with God builds our faith. And guess what? Our faith makes our prayers more effective. So you have to kind of keep both of them going. You have to cleanse these things. It takes more than a few things. We need the Word of God to stand upon. And so as uh, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 13, sometimes it seems like we see through a glass darkly. And someday we will see clearly. But even before then, we can clarify our vision. We can listen to the heal and listen to the Holy Spirit. And we can strengthen our faith by building the basics of our spiritual life. I don't know about you, but I want to be transformed this year into a better man, into a better servant of the Lord. I want to see signs and wonders and miracles. I want to see powerful changes of the Lord. I want to see guests here that have been transformed by the Holy Spirit. I want to fill this tank and be baptizing people this year. How many of you want to feel that way? How many of you have that kind of faith you want to have? And I don't know what you feel about it, but you want to be someone that next year, when we come together at the beginning of next year, if the Lord should tarry, you want to be sitting next to someone that you brought to the faith. How many you want, to, I want that to happen? You want to have somebody that you disciple. See, look at this. I believe we are, we are here to go and make disciples. But for that to be the case, you've got to have enough strength to not only carry yourself, but someone else. And so you've got to have the ability, a foundation to build on. Here's the thing. I, I see this a lot. You know, as you get weaker, it's hard to carry things, right? Right? And if, you're, if your feet and legs are unsteady, right, it's kind of difficult to, can you imagine Frank trying to carry Joanne down the stairs right now? I apologize, but you understand, or Joanne carrying Frank down the stairs. That, now we're really in trouble. You got to have a good foundation, right? It's like the old, the Bible talks about the blind leading the blind. You don't want a blind person leading you, right? I mean, this is the challenge. If people don't have clear faith, right? And I'll be honest with you, when I was driving into town the other day on Friday night, I was a little uh, unhappy because I was driving with my, pe my family in the car and I wasn't seeing as clearly as I should. Imagine going through life as the head of a home or as the, a parent or as a person that is influencing the lives of those around you. And by the way, all of us are doing that. We're leading people whether we want to or not whether we think we are or not. We're influencing people. We are. And so our clarity, if you've been around a person that's full of faith, man, you'll get excited. I mean, before long, you're as excited as they are, or at least you, or is that, or you go, man, get out of way from me. I don't want that kind of faith. <laughs> you're too excited. You're too, you're too carried away. You make me feel like I don't have. But the reality is we can build up our most holy faith. And that's why I brought this today. Because there's some basic things. Now, one of the most basic tools you need if you're going to build something is a hammer. Now, nowadays, a lot of times you use screwdrivers. We'll talk about that today, or power tools. But this is something, I mean, even if you've got power tools, there's going to be times when you need just a basic hammer. You just need a basic hammer. And so if you've got somebody that, you know, starting out and they don't have, this is something they'll need. You can pretty much guarantee it. But this, you know, it doesn't matter how powerful this is. A lot of us have the Holy Spirit in our lives. But it's not doing a lot of work. Because you can have the tools and the knowledge, right? But you're not going to get a whole lot of done. I can't put two pieces of wood together with just a, at least I've tried it a few times, it didn't work too well. Maybe if you cut the other wood just so, so they notch each other. But that's not how many normally work. You need something else, don't you? Anybody know what this is? Does anybody know what aisle this is on at Kent's or Home Depot? What's it called? Called the fasteners, right? That's right. Al seven. Well, you're there a little too much, there, bro. Is that?
not your wife's fault or yours, that's for sure. <laughs> now, some of you may recognize this. This is from a few weeks ago when I was spray painting something that looked like this to make it look like this. We call it called Fastness. I believe it's Father's Day. Some of you men may still have them. If you don't, well, go find it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the idea was is that is that we don't just we don't see we have the word of God. We have knowledge. But we have to do more than that, don't we? Just like my car had a windshield and it had a light and it had lenses, but they had to be clean. They had to be made available. They had to be worked. They had to be renewed and refreshed. Well, guess what? I can have this all day long, and I can go around beating stuff all day long. And some of us, if we're not careful, that's what we do with our knowledge of God. We go around beating things, ourselves, other people, right? But if you really want to make a difference, you've got to fasten something together. You need a fastener. You need something that's called, and in a basic sense, what this does is do what? Connect two different things together. It's a connector. Now, I, al I could also have brought up stairs. I could have brought up, in, in, since we're talking about foundational things, I could have brought up some, some mud, or I guess you'd call it concrete, um, different things like that. That's what we put between concrete blocks. I mean, that's it, the idea being something that connects or holds something together. Let me tell you this. There is nothing that will connect you to power like prayer. There's nothing that will connect you to faith like prayer. There's nothing that will build up your faith like being in the presence of God. You don't even have to know anything about God if you get in His presence. And some of you have been there where you were in His presence. You go back to your first time when you felt the presence of God. You may not have known a whole lot about the Word of God. Cass didn't always, hasn't always known a lot about the Word of God. But when she felt the presence of God, when she felt the love of God, something happens, doesn't it? Something happens. Something connects us. And then that, as we begin talking to God, even if it's just simple words like, God, I, I need you, God, or I love you, Lord, or, or would you help me, Lord? When we start talking to God, no matter how basic it may be, it connects us to God. That becomes a connection. That becomes a, something that fastens us to him. And the more we pray, the more connected we are. I don't know about you. I don't want to leave any gaps in my foundation. Some of us, um, in fact, over the years, what happens sometimes in foundations and, and, and brickwork is the, 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 you know, the in-between, the concrete, or whatever the fat, whatever's holding it together is. The mortar, I guess, would be the technical term for it. The mortar begins to leach, the line leaches out, and it begins to just become sand again. And if we're not careful, it has to go back, and they call it pointing, right? I believe that's correct. They go back, and they repoint it. They go back, and they put another layer and then they, they, the pointing is that they clean it up so it looks nice and clean. But the point is, is that it has to be redone once in a while to protect what's inside. I, I'm here to tell you today that the church needs to, at this beginning of the year, God's telling us, it doesn't matter how long we've been living for God, we need to make sure our connection to God is just as strong, that nothing is leached out, that nothing's been removed, that we're still protecting the connection, the strength of our faith. If our faith was ever stronger than it is today, we need to re reconnect to God. If you've ever believed for miracles more than you believe now, you need to reconnect to God. If you, if you see something in the Word that you've never seen come past in your life, you've never seen the dead rays or, the, or those that have been lame walking, there's no reason we can't see that again. What's the difference? We need more faith. We need to connect to God more perfectly or more completely or more holy. Now, when we're talking about this, is obviously we're talking about nails, and that puts two flat surfaces together, and usually by doing that, they stay strong together. But when you're talking about mortar, you're talking about making sure that there's a consistency, that everything is connected. You don't want to leave holes in that, so the wind comes blowing through, especially this time of the year, right? In fact, we even make sure that we seal our doorways, don't we? We make sure there's a good rubber seal around the door if you're wise, and that doesn't mean you should go telling, I mean, we need that right now. Come on, honey. What, what's wrong with our door? Right? But the point being is that we need these connections. When things come together and they're touching and they're connected, it creates a seal. It protects us. Does anybody know that there's a seal of the Holy Spirit? Did you know there's a seal of the Holy Spirit? And this is what I'm, I'm afraid of. I am seeing over the last several years, and my, in fact, I've been watching it since I came back in the late 80s and early 90s in North America. I have watched the church struggle with being sealed by the Holy Spirit. 
The world, the winds of this world, the rain of this world, the problems of this world have worked their way in. Not the water of the Holy Spirit, but the water of the world and the, the moisture of the world and the ideas of the world have beat on our houses. And some of us, we've, we've lost our connection to the foundation. We've lost our connection to the fundamentals of our walk with God. I'm not here today to condemn anybody or, or point it out. I don't know what your relationship with God is. But let me just tell you, if you are not excited about prayer, then you've lost the fun part of the dementals. I know that sounds sad. But really, you know how you know a mature Christian? Because they enjoy prayer. And we'll talk about it probably next week. They enjoy the Word of God. They love to read the Word. They love to study and to apply the Word. Not just study it to, to know it, but study it to do it. Right? To be doers of the Word. And so these are the reality of a true walk with God. And it doesn't matter whether you've been living for God for 70 or 80 years or whether you're just learning. You're just two months old in the Lord. You just spoke in tongues a few weeks ago. It doesn't matter. The fundamentals are still need to be strengthened. The fundamentals still need to be empowered and lifted up and encouraged. And so because here's the, be the beauty of the reality and the necessity of the fundamentals is they are always practical. They're so practical. I'm going to use three P words here in my teaching here today. But the reality is we live in a world that seeks pleasure and fun. But they don't think fundamental things are fun. Now, I don't know about how many of you were on a, on a, have ever been on a team, like a basketball team or a soccer team or a softball team or a hockey team. We're in Canada after all. Um, but if you've ever been on any kind of a team, maybe, maybe at work. Maybe you were on a job and you had to work. There's something about working together, the fundamentals. For example, you used to work in check cashing, right, Marie? So I mean, in cashing in, in, in as, as a cashier. When you're working as cashier, it's all about how fast you can go. But it doesn't matter how fast you go if you don't get the thing to scan. So the fundamentals are do it fast, do it right, do it accurately. When you count your change, all those kinds of things. You want to do them fast and accurately. So you learn the fundamentals. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When you're driving, Dan, there's certain fundamentals to driving. Number one, keep a certain amount of space between you and the next vehicle, especially if you're driving a tanker full of gas, right? Right? There's certain things called defensive driving skills that you can add value to your ability to drive. There's, there's certain things that you just learn. I know when I, when I took my commercial driver's license, there were things that you had to learn that you didn't have to learn. We used to check our equipment. I don't know if you were required to. I was required to check my equipment every time before I drove. Now, how many of you go with, like, I, if I had done that Friday night, I wouldn't have any trouble. But I don't do that normally in my normal car. But if we would check our equipment, we need to check and assess the fundamentals because that's the basis for everything that we do. And the most basic thing in your walk with God is the fact that you talk to God. You see, any church that does not pray will never have power because there's nothing more practical to your walk with God than communication with Jesus. Hebrews 11, verses 1, and then I'll jump down to verse 6. And Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You all knew that I was probably going to get to that scripture because that's fundamental to faith in those that have been in church for any length of time. It's the substance. It's what you can hold on to. It's something that's concrete to us. It's something that we can fasten ourselves to. Something that holds us to the cross and holds us to the, the truth of God's word. It's the evidence of things that we cannot see with the natural eye. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says this, but without faith it is impossible to please him. So how important is it, how fundamental is it that we connect to God with faith? Absolutely. If we do not believe, we cannot receive. If we do not have faith, we cannot please Him. We cannot hope to move into the future. We have to be able to see clearly, as I said earlier. We have to be able to have fresh vision. And it's, we also need to have the Word of God applied to what we're trying to see. It's not only important that we see it, it's important that we see it through the Word. And so faith makes it possible for us to please Him. It makes it possible for us to come to God as a believer. We must believe that He exists. Now, this is very fundamental. 
But how real is God to you? I'm not saying that you're here today and don't believe in God. But how much do you believe in God? See, I see a lot of people come to church and they believe that God exists. They've got this first step down. But you know what? The Bible teaches us, according to one of the authors in the New Testament, the devils also believe and tremble. So believing that God exists is not that big of a deal. Sadly, there's a lot of people in the world that don't believe God exists, when even the devils and demons do. But that's, So that's the first step. They've got to believe. We've got to believe that he is. But that's not enough. We also must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, I could spend the rest of the day on just this topic right here, just this one verse, but that's not our focus. But he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Can you seek God without praying? How? How could you seek God without communicating with him? How can you seek God without calling out to him? How can, you, how can he know what you want unless you say it? And I know I've said this to you many times as your pastor. God does not answer need. He answers faith. There were thousands of people that were sick in Jesus' day. But he healed those that came to him. He healed those who came out to him and asked him. And over and over again, and this is something I've also mentioned to you, is that Jesus, I mean, that blind Bartimaeus is obviously blind. <laughs> right? And what Jesus, what would you have me do to you? <laughs> blind. But God is not going to do what you do not ask him for. We must believe enough to ask. He rewards those who ask. And I'm going to get into this a little bit later if the Lord gives us enough time and I have time. But he's a rewarder of those who diligently. Now understand this word diligent is not something that happens by accident. This is fundamental. Faith con con continues. It pursues. It persists. It's diligent. And it's seeking. You see, this is what happens to people that become truly great at any sport. They have to keep working at it. If you're a hockey player, you're going to spend some time slapping shots into the net. Over and over and over and over. And they're also, if you have a good, they're going to make you do line sprints. They're going to make you go, and they do that almost every sport for some reason. Why? Because they're trying to make you quick, trying to make you strong. They want you to be able to change direc direction quickly. They want you to be strong. Fundamentals. You have good breath. You're strong in your body. Are you strong in your spirit today? How strong are you spiritually? This has nothing to do with your physical needs. This has everything to do with your spiritual strength. How strong is your spiritual? How long can you pray before you give up? Is 10 minutes the max? That's all I can think about. <laughs> That's as long as I can pray, God. That's all I got the strength for. Right? 15 minutes? Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! You know? You know how you can tell someone that's really in good shape spiritually? An hour is nothing. It's nothing. They go right by an hour of prayer like it was just standing still. Right? Don't be condemned by this. My point is that you can increase your strength. You can increase your stamina in prayer. You can diligently seek Him. You can diligently seek Him. You see, some of us, we fall just a little short of getting the gold or the silver or the bronze or even finishing the race in prayer for that day. You know, God does not, the race not go necessarily to the swift. It goes to the one who endures, the one who stays in the race. And so we have to endure. We, we have to pursue him. We have to continue. Fundamentals are when you are in shape spiritually, when you're full of faith, it's a joy to pray. Because you believe he's going to answer. Right? If you're not sure God's going to answer, then it's difficult to pray. It's a, it's a long, hard slog. Well, God, you didn't do it last time, and you didn't do it the time before that, and you haven't done it the last 77 times. That's not going to help you. That's not going to help you. That means you're looking at failures. You're looking at other things. You're certainly not looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher. So the first thing we have to recognize is that 
faith is practical and praying is practical uh, not only is is faith practical but it's powerful the fundamentals of faith are are mountain moving once you move beyond the basics of practical everyday faith of strengthening your faith exercising your faith working out your faith amen then you start becoming powerful when you're full of the holy spirit then you have the faith you can even have supernatural faith the bible talks about that as a gift of the spirit you can have incredible faith faith that's beyond natural ability and i've seen that among some of you you have supernatural faith it's not just faith that's because you've built it up and because you've worked hard god is actually giving you a gift of faith and you need to exercise that and use that to encourage other people because you can see the, the, the blessing and the hope and the future even beyond the circumstance. When you have that kind of faith, you need to share it with people. And when you struggle, go find someone that has that kind of faith because they'll help you with that. In Matthew 17, verse 19 through 21, the disciples came to Jesus after they had just tried to cast out a demonic spirit from a woman's child. And they came to Jesus afterwards privately and said, uh, how come we couldn't cast it out? And in verse 20, Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you that if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And so what Jesus was saying here is that we have to pray and we have to add fasting to it. We may talk more about that tonight in our service but the reality is if we want to move mountains if we want to cast out demonic forces if you want to have power supernatural power then we have to have a powerful faith and powerful faith comes from prayer and fasting prayer spending time with god until god is more real to you his greatness is greater than anything you face you see, if we don't pray, and we're not connected to God, we're not connected to the rock, if we're not connected to the foundation like we should, if we're not fastened completely and immovably to Jesus Christ through prayer, you know, 15 minutes is not going to hold you a whole lot lo very long. Now, I'm not saying you can't be in the Spirit all day long. I'm not saying that. And if 15 minutes is what you had, but I'm just telling you, ongoing if all you have is an awareness of God for 15 minutes a day, you're going to have some pretty weak faith. Yeah, you're, you're going to face, <laughs> some of us, <laughs> we go out to start the car and it doesn't start and we've already lost our faith. Right? We go out to the car and the windshield fluid isn't working. <laughs> we go out to the car and there's ice on the, on the car. We've already lost our faith. We're, this is going to be a terrible day. Oh, this is going to be a rough day. Well, that's faith. Not the right kind of faith, but it's faith. What we believe. What we believe. Do we believe this is going to be the best day? Do we believe that God has got a divine appointment for us today? Someone to minister to. Someone that I'm going to pray for. Someone I'm going to meet today that God is going to use me to strengthen and to encourage and to inspire. Do you have that kind of faith? Do you have a kind of faith that says God is going to do and be amazing, incredible things? And so when you go to the shopping market or when you go to the drive through or whenever you are, you're looking for somebody to minister to. That's someone that's full of faith. That's someone that's looking to give it away. That's someone who isn't walking with shaky legs, right? And I can't hardly carry anything. We need to have strong faith foundational, firmly planted on the Word of God, firmly connected to Jesus Christ, being truly the temple of the living God, that in me is the glory and power of the Holy Spirit, and anything is possible, not because of me, but because of who is in me. Do you see what God wants to do this year? He wants to strengthen us and empower us so that we can not only carry ourselves, but carry someone else with us. Maybe carry your entire family, Rhymer Chucks. Maybe carry your entire family, Connors. Maybe carry your entire family in prayer, right into the throne room of God and bring them before God. Not once in a while, but every day I bring them before the throne, not just with hope, but with faith that's sure, a confidence that my family, my lost loved ones, my, my brother, my sister, my spouse would be raised up and strengthened walking in success. You say, well, that's a mountain you're talking about. Yeah, 
What's a mountain to God? How big is a mountain from space? You can't even see mountains in space. No. You might see some shapes, but you can't see the height of it. I've, I've looked at globes. We've got them around. And we've shown pictures of them. You can't tell Mount Everest from any other mountain on the planet because compared to space, it's nothing. Compared to the size of our world, and our world is next to nothing in size. I don't care how big your mountain is. It's nothing compared to the God that creates the universe, that has all power in heaven and in earth. The name that we're calling on is not just any name. It's the name of Jesus who calms storms, who healed all their diseases, who is able to strengthen and encourage and edify and empower us. Woo! Can anybody call on that name right now? Let's say his name. Jesus. Or practice just a little bit. Jesus. I call on Jesus. My wife led us in song today. I did not know. We, God just does this for us. And isn't that beautiful? We talked about the name of Jesus through our song service this morning. What a beautiful, powerful name, the name of Jesus. And when we connect it to Jesus, we have the right to use the name. We'll talk more about that later in the month or first of next month. But there's a right that you can get to have the name of Jesus as his spouse, as his children. We have the right to use his name with authority. We can be powerful. Let me con uh, wrap this up here pretty quickly if I can. It's the first fundamental for faith. Pray. All of us receive the measure of faith or a measure of faith, the measure of faith, depending on which reference you use. But regardless, we all receive some faith from God. We all have a desire to believe in something. You don't have to teach people to believe. You may have to teach them what to believe, but you don't have to teach them to believe. They will put their faith in something. The government, money, fame. They'll find something to believe in because we need that. As human beings, we're designed to need to believe, to put our faith in something. What our job is as people of God is to remember and never forget that we're only supposed to put our faith in Jesus Christ. First, foremost, and always, we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And prayer is the way that we show and strengthen that faith. Without talking to God, without spending time in his presence, how can you know that he's good? How can you know he's faithful if you don't spend time with him? If you don't ask and receive and find out that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So James 1, 6 through 8 says this, but let him ask without doubting. As him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything for the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. We are to be, and we mentioned it this morning actually in our pre-service prayer, this is something we have to be careful of. We cannot be indecisive. We have got to be stable, connected, and firm. Not only that, but as we pray in James chapter, a little later in James, he says this, in James chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And we know that, that word save there is broad. It means spirit, soul, and body can be saved when the elders pray for someone. Jesus said, thy sins are forgiven thee. Rise up and walk. <laughs> We're all shocked, right? The paraplegic, the one that they let down, the four men broke up the roof, and they were unhappy with him. But he says, you need to know, it's the same thing to me, to forgive sins or to heal. It's the same thing to me. If you've ever been healed, know that it's just as easy for God to forgive you. And if you've ever been forgiven, know it's just as easy for God to heal you. It's nothing to God. It's small. It's a small thing. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Some of you need to be raised up. I'm telling you right now, the prayer of faith can do that for you. Not only from other people praying for you, but for you praying by faith. And if he has any committed sins, if he has committed sins, it, it, he will be forgiven. What a powerful truth. The Bible teaches us that, by the way, that whatever sins we hold on to are kept. Whatever sins we remit are forgiven. So I encourage you to forgive sins because we don't want anybody to be held liable on the day of judgment. And then finally, in 1 John 5, 14 through 15, now this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 
I know some of you have been asking yourself that question. Does he hear me? It's funny how we know he hears us, but we question it. We doubt it. Why? Because we don't see him doing what we want him to do. And so we question. But understand this. The word is very clear on this. Put the light of the word on it, folks. Clean the lens so that you can see clearly, so the light of the word of God will shine more clearly. Let's cleanse ourselves so that we can see more clearly and understand and believe that when we pray, he hears us. And we know that he hears us. If we know that, listen, listen to what it says here. Listen to the words here. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now, the timing of it, I found, is up to God. But if we, listen, listen. I'm not going to have time to dig into this today but because, because I'm, I'm dealing with fundamentals. But if you really want to increase your prayer life, m- move through this a little bit. Examine this this week. Spend some time in 1 John 5, 14 through 15. Spend some time meditating on it. Because what we'll do, the word, it will become brighter and brighter as you clean it, as you meditate on it. Like I did my lenses on my, we need to cleanse it sometimes. We need to meditate on the word. And this word will increase your prayer life, I promise you. And whatever we ask. If we ask according to his will, that's the first step, right? We have to have confidence in him. That's where it starts. And then we ask according to his will. We know that he hears us. If we know that he's hearing us, the next step is that we know that whatever we ask, we'll have what we need. We'll have his petitions because we ask of him. The Bible goes on to say, let me, let me um, p- wrap this up by going back to our text today. Before you come. Jude 20 through 21. Now, This basic concept, the idea here is the maintenance of your life with God. Maintaining or building or strengthening your walk with God. And so Jude writes to the church, and it's one of the shortest letters, I think it's the shortest letter to the church that we have in uh, the New Testament. And it's very clear here, Jude is writing this passage. He calls himself a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. And he says, but you, beloved, building up... No, that's not what it says, is it? doesn't say building up. Well, it does, but it has a word in there. It's saying building up. Building who? Yourself. Who's responsible for your increased prayer life? Who's responsible for the power of your prayer? I am. You are. We are responsible for maintaining and increasing and strengthening our connection to the rock. starts with, but you, beloved. Beloved, we can separate the two words, be loved. When you hear the word beloved in Scripture, say, I can choose to be loved, or I can choose not to be loved. But God's saying I'm loved. Why not agree with me? You see, this is the mindset we have to take if we want to approach God with, with powerful prayer, is that I am loved. I am loved. I am being loved by God. Every day that I live, I am loved. And, so and this is how we begin, right? We begin with faith, with praise and worship by acknowledging what he's already done for us, by being thankful. And he goes on to say, building yourself up. Don't be looking at someone else to build your faith. They may help you. And I may be able to help you today. But all I'm really supplying today, I should have brought it in. I didn't think about it. I could have brought in my little wet wipes. Taking a wet wipe home to people. I've been a reminder this week. To build up your faith, I can't afford to give you all hammers. Hopefully, you brought your Bible with you anyway. You can have a nail if you want, actually. But today, to fasten you to Christ. Not just once, not just twice, but pray without ceasing. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. And what's it tell you there? It tells you the first step in building up your faith. Right? Praying in the Holy Spirit. How long have you been spoken in tongues and your spirit closed? You don't have to speak in tongues again necessarily to be saved, but I'm telling you, when you get close to Jesus and the Spirit is closed, it's a little quicker. Something will happen. I did it this week. Got in his presence. And I felt the layers of 
something different. The layers of faith covered me. And that's one reason why the analogy that I use for the car was in the grime and the dirt. You need to be cleansed. You need to be reconnected, made pure. I want a fresh vision. But also, not only a fresh vision and clarity in my thinking, but I also want the light of the Word of God. Have you ever read the Word of God without prayer? I've done it a few times. I didn't get a whole lot out of it. But when you pray and read the Word, something happens. Illumination comes. Revelation comes. Light comes. And you build up yourself. You build up your faith. Your holy, your perfect faith, your pure faith. The faith that can make you complete. I want to be in communion with you, Father. Keep yourself in the love of God. That's something about communion to me. I want to keep myself in Him. I want to keep myself. Wherever you, God, I, that's where I want to be. I want to stay in you. Wherever you're going, that's where I want to be. I want to be in you. I want to be led. How can we do that without communication? How can we do that without listening to God? And hearing what He had to say to us as we pray. Communication. Communication. How we keep ourselves unified with God, one with God, in the love of God. Prayer. He goes on to say, it's where we feel and know the mercy of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord. And then finally it says, unto eternal life. Prayer. It's where we taste eternity. I don't know about you, but I prayed this week more than a few times. I felt invincible. I felt powerful. I felt like an overcomer. It had nothing to do with the pain, the sorrow, the sickness, and whatever ever challenge I've been through this. Some of you know what I'm talking about. We've been through two trials. And we may not be able to run like we used to. We may not be able to carry physically what we used to carry. We may have weakness in all kinds of areas of our life. But this I know, that when I'm full of the Holy Spirit, all things are possible to the one that believes. And I am complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. And I can do all things through Christ which who strengthens me. I am able if I will pray. Hallelujah. And let me just remind you again. Oh, let me just remind you again. If we're going to build a foundation, it begins. If you want to build a foundation to connect to Christ, the first thing we do is praise him. Oh, would you praise him right now? Heavenly Father, we're going we're gonna to fall through with this in the last few minutes. We're going to begin with praise. I praise you, God. The praise, the praise of my heart, the prayer of praise, your worthy. Come on, let's do that right now. God, you're glorious. You're excellent. I'm going to magnify you. I want to increase my awareness of my great one. I want to make you more real to me, more real in my life as I magnify you. Come on, fill your mouth with praise and thanksgiving. Increase your faith. If you can't do this, you're not going to get any further. Because this is where faith, this is where great prayer begins. It begins with praise. I praise you. I magnify you. I acknowledge that you are great. That you're powerful. You're glorious. You're infinite. Come on, say all the names of God. We went through a whole list. Lord, you're my counselor. God, you're powerful. You're my day star. You're my creator. You're my comfort. You're all superior. Come on. I will bless your name at all times. Your praise shall continually be in I will boast in you. I will boast about you. Look at my God. Look at how great he is. Be afraid, enemy of my soul. Be very afraid. For I have a God that delivers. I have a Jesus that laid down his life for me. I am valuable. I am the beloved. God so loved that he gave his life. Love, I am love. I thank you for loving me. I praise you for being so amazing in your love, in your kindness, in your goodness, in your power, oh, your power. And then we can go beyond praise to persistence. It means we keep doing it. We not only ask, but we seek. And we not only seek, but we knock. Can we do that right now? Oh, God, I'm not giving up until I receive. There's a prayer of persistence. 
You taught us to not give up, to keep asking until we receive what we need. We give up, Lord. This is why we've got to learn to run the race. This is why we've got to do it more often. We've got to exercise our faith. So we have the faith that will keep us praying until we receive the power. Until we receive the power. Until we receive what we ask of you, we persist. We ask, we seek, we walk until, until, until we receive the power. Come on, Lord, take it. Come on, let's go to the Father. Let's go into powerful, effective prayer. Let's be full of faith. Come on, James 5, 16. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a Jesus Christ will avail us much. Let's do that right now, Lord. I don't want to just have a pitiful prayer. I want to have powerful prayer. I want to have prayer that's full of effectiveness. I want to pray according to your will. I want to pray, Lord, in your spirit and with understanding. Lord, I want to pray effectively. Effectively. Come on, be specific in your prayer. Be specific in your prayer so that you will know when he rewards your prayer. Come on, be specific. Come on, some of you have been playing games with God. You have not been specific enough because you're afraid you he might not answer. But why don't you be specific? Why don't you try God? Heavenly Father, I come to you with faith today, believing you're going to reach my lost loved ones this year, God. And I, even if you don't, I'm going to keep believing because I know I have a promise from you. I have an assurance from you. Lord, I'm asking you today for my physical needs. You tell us, come on, and build up your faith. Come on, build up your holy faith, your pure faith, your precious faith. Come on, build up your faith. Come on, prayer builds faith, and faith builds prayer. Exercise, exercise your faith in prayer. Come on. Some of us, we've laid on our beds. I have. Sometimes I've laid in my bed. I didn't have, I couldn't even get up for an hour or two. Several years ago, that's where I was, church. I had to pray for several hours before I could even come to church. I had to pray and pray and pray before I could even get out of bed. Lord, I'm here thanking you, God, that I rose out of bed this morning quickly and easily. Lord, two years ago, I would not have believed that I, I, I would just pray like this. You gave me the breath of life. Lord, if you did that for me, for three and a half years, you can do it for anybody in this room. We're not that weak. We're not that far gone. You're faithful, and you're true, and you're good, and you're kind. I will praise you until I have faith enough to believe. I'm going to keep praising and believing and praying until I receive my assurance. Until I know you have heard my prayer. And then finally, the fourth thing we must do, we'll talk more about this on, on Wednesday, or Tuesday in this small group is we must have fervent, heartfelt prayer. Or would we pray Acts chapter 2? Come on. They were all of one mind and one accord. That's what brings the fire. Oh, God, let us pray until, until, until we receive the promise of the Father. What promise from the Father do you need? Come on, church. What promise from the Father do you need? You are faithful. I'm going to go for it with my whole heart. Oh, with fervency, with a fiery prayer, until I receive the fire that falls. All they that wait upon the Lord. I don't know what occupies your time, but more than half of our church is retired. You can fill all the time you want with time. I know you can. I know you can. When I wake in the early morning with aching bones, why not spend that in prayer? Lord God, when I can't have trouble going to sleep, why not spend that time in prayer? I'm having trouble with my physical needs or with a heartache or a problem. Why not spend that time connecting to Jesus, connecting, building up my most holy faith? I will build it myself.
our district. Let it not be true of the church in motion. Oh, God. Let it not be true of every member of this assembly. Oh, God, we would be people of prayer. And when people think about us, the first they think they think of, the first thing they think of, they think of the people that are in this assembly. That's a person of prayer. That's a person that talks with God, that talks with God. Let us first of all be a house of prayer. Let my temple, this body, be a house of prayer. was true. Now, there'll be no doubt. There'll be no fear. Lord, we're not talking about condemnation. We're talking about growing closer to you. Laying aside what you need to say to this person. Let's be closer to you. Thank you. 
back tonight and spent some great things. I've already prayed.